Hello and welcome to my devlog. My name is Jarmo and this is episode one. In this episode, I'll be discussing five requirements I put together for my first multiplayer game development session with Flax Engine. I knew right off the bat that I wanted to take advantage of Flax's headless game operating mode. I wanted to use this operating mode for any server infrastructure that I deploy for the game. Going through my requirements list here, there are five items which I'd like to present. The first was I wanted a single game build. I didn't want to have multiple builds or distributions for catalog server, game server, or game client, but rather one game that I could pass CLI arguments to and reference a JSON configuration file that would initialize the proper uh, infrastructure on the game side. Number two, I wanted to launch three instances of the game. Number three, I wanted two of those instances in headless mode. Number four, I wanted all instances to be connected to mono debugger. And number five, I wanted to take advantage of command line arguments to pass the configuration file to the game so that I initialize the right head end infrastructure, if you will, or the game client. So with that, I will get going here with my presentation. So in order to facilitate uh, the headless mode, Flax has a number of command line arguments which are available. You can find these by searching the Flax engine manual for command line. And there are a number of them listed here. There are even some new ones that will be released in 1.2 which are not currently pr present on this list. And I'm actually using one of those because I'm using a local engine build. So to facilitate the launching of these, you know, multiple games through my IDE, I wrote some very simple bat files and passed these commands to the game. So here's my temporary game name of Flax Game and my temporary project name of Flax Wars. These will be changed in the future once I start collaborating on a game. First thing I'm doing is setting the title for the window so that I can easily distinguish what is the catalog server, what is the game server, and what is the game client. Secondly, I'm redirecting all output to the standard output. I am waiting for the game to launch internally until the mono debugger is attached. This is a new argument which will be available in a future version of Flex or if you want to build it locally. And then I'm specifying a listener, a listener port for mono debugger over the loopback and then I'm passing a JSON configuration file. So I have three bat files, client, server, essentially the same thing, just specifying a different port and a different configuration file. Now the server is also running in headless mode, so there will be no um, essentially graphics rendering going on. It will just be a command window. It's also running in mute mode, so there'll be no audio initialized. There'll be no audio libraries running. The same is true for the catalog server, different listener port, different configuration. And then I combine all these together into separate command windows in a launch.bat. This is so I can just have one, one item to execute from my IDE uh, run configuration, which is the launch. So I'm moving along to the IDE configuration. I prefer to use Writer. You can do this in Writer. You can also do this in Visual, Visual Studio. So the first thing I'll look at are the mono debuggers. You can add these mono remote debuggers and you just specify a listening port. So I've specified the client at you know 50,002, the server at 50,001, the catalog at 50,000. I then compound these in a single executable for debugging the client, catalog, and server. Additionally, I reference the launch.bat file as a native executable in my working directory for my project. I've also kind of isolated the client. That's simply um, for doing some various testing when I was working on integrating my plugin. I also have two build options here, one through Flax build for rebuilding game binaries. There, there is documentation on this is available in the Flax engine manual. And then I'm also using the Flax editor CLI, calling my pro you know, accessing my project and building it in headless mode. I prefer to do things this way because I don't like using cook functionality inside the IDE. 
I only like to use, I'm sorry, inside the editor, I only like to use the editor for assets and prefer to push everything as much as possible through the ID. Okay, so let's give it a go here. I first launched the debugger for all three. That will give me separate debugging windows. And then if I am to if I go here and put a break in and run all three. You can see my command windows launch and I'm already hitting the breakpoint. So essentially all three I've hit the breakpoint at this point. That gives me three command windows. I, I like to have a command window for the client as well. Here is my game. This particular game is running with a Vulkan render. And if I examine these command windows, I have a headless catalog server running here. Now there's no catalog server functionality yet. I will get to that in a future episode. But you can see the server is working. It's initialized UDP server. It's found a configuration file, and it's essentially sitting here processing the game loop. The same is true for the game server, and the same is true for the game client. Now, I, I haven't actually written any code to differentiate these modes. They're all just simply launching a server, right? Because it's one game build. But I'm, I did this to essentially put the framework in place for multiplayer game development. So that is all I have for episode one. My goal with these are to keep them s short and sweet and get right to things. I do intend on releasing my Hero Cla Crab plugin uh, open source and going through in detail how that works and how to set that up. And then I also intend to reveal the game that I'm working on and hopefully build a following among other engine enthusiasts as well as fans of the game. So thank you for watching.